its trinomials. So this is like number 49. So instead of the difference perfect squares, perfect square trinomial, trinomial means it has three terms. So we're back to three terms here. But notice the first and the last are perfect squares. 49 and 100 are perfect squares. Now 140 is not. The middle number does not need to be a perfect square. But the middle number is a combination here. Uh, so we should look for a GCF. There's not one in this case. I'll go ahead and tell you that. There's not one here. Okay. Um, so let's just jump into our factors. Two sets of parentheses because it's a trinomial. 49, the square root of 49 is 7. So we've got 7R and 7R just like we did on the previous problem. Square root of 100 is 10. So we've got 10 and 10. This last number is always going to be positive. Okay, it's always going to be positive. So we look to the first sign to tell us what signs to put in here. So they're both positives. This is what is special about a perfect square trinomial. You end up with the exact same factor in both sets of parentheses. Here's where the 140 comes from. The outside gives us 70R and the inside gives us 70R. So 70 plus 70 is 140. Now, here's what you have to do though. Because they are exactly the same thing, this is how that answer would show up on a multiple choice test. It would show up as 7R plus 10 squared because it's the exact same factor. You can't do it on the ones we just did because they weren't exactly the same. One had a plus, one had a minus. But on this, both of them have the same sign. They're exactly the same. So this is how we need to write that term. Okay? So perfect square trinomial, three terms. Look for the first and the last terms to be perfect squares. And then it automatically always factors like this. Okay? Now, I'm not going to show you an example of doing this with a GCF because it works exactly the same. You just take out the GCF first. So I'm just going to let y'all jump into...